Yes. Welcome to Worship with Grace Episcopal Church, Galveston, Texas, on this, the first Sunday in Lent, 21 February, 2021. Whether you're joining us live on Facebook or later on recorded video, we're glad that you found us and hope this experience of worship will be a blessing to you and to your family. And now we take a moment to listen, to focus, to um, center ourselves, to open up that space of quiet in our lives so that we can worship the God who loves us, who created us, who sustains us. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Using the form on page 79 of the Book of Common Prayer, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. 
Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Canticle 14, A Song of Penitence, is found on page 90 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us say Canticle 14 responsively as indicated in our worship bulletin. O Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all of their righteous offspring. You made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O oh Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering, and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O oh Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal, sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O oh Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. The appointed psalm is a portion of Psalm 25, beginning on page 614 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us say verses 1 through 9 of Psalm 25 responsively by half verse. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord. And teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love. For they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. 
He guides the humble in doing right. And teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness. To those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you. And with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, and many as come out of the ark, I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of the flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on earth. God said to Noah, this is a sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Here ends the reading. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beast and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Here ends the reading. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, there is so much in, in our two readings this morning. Um, really, what I call this sermon is a pick three sermon. So I, I've just picked three um, things that I think are meaningful on this day. The first thing that uh, comes to me from the gospel reading um, that Reverend Pat Ritchie gave um, is the wilderness. And I think this year I focused on uh, something that, uh, that I think was reminded uh, or brought to mind by the, the recent difficulties that we've all been through uh, with the weather and lack of electricity and heat and water. Uh, in previous years, I, I used to think that when, when I would take on a Lenten discipline, um, like reading Bible passages or uh, the, uh, the Living Compass, Living Well Through Lent series, you know, taking on something extra or giving up things. Like I, I, I typically always uh, 
give up uh, diet soft drinks because you know they I'm drinking them constantly. Um, I've been doing this. You know, I, I remember uh, one year at uh, the, at Trinity Episcopal School. Uh, you know, sharing with the kids that I was giving up um, uh, diet coke, and uh, which which is great. Wanted to model for them, and but but one of the third graders saw me buying diet coke in the grocery store and turned me in to the assistant head of school. And the deal is that different, you know, people observe their Lenten disciplines in different ways. Uh, you know, my approach uh, has been a liturgical one that really there are 40 days in Lent, and that does not include the Sundays. I don't know if you noticed that when we describe uh, the Sundays, uh, we, we say the first Sunday in Lent, not the first Sunday of Lent, and that's on purpose because those Sundays are not actually part of those 40 days. Every Sunday is a day that we celebrate the resurrection. So, um, you know, if I do a discipline um, where I've given up something, I, I typically uh, don't observe that privation, um, if you will, uh, during uh, Sundays. However, I learned this year uh, that wilderness had a different meaning. Um, and so when, when we have those small disciplines in our lives, there, of course, our hope is that, that there will be grace in those disciplines and we will be reminded of our dependence on God alone. But they really are minor things compared to the wilderness that Jesus experienced. What jumped off the page for me this time is that Jesus apparently didn't choose to go into the wilderness, you know, like one might choose to have a retreat. You know, this wasn't a retreat that he took after his baptism. It was, he was driven into the wilderness. Um, you get the sense that Jesus didn't really have a choice in this matter, um, uh, that he was driven, he was compelled to go into the wilderness. And the wilderness represents, you know, that, that removing oneself from civilization, crossing that threshold into that which is uncivilized, there, without rules that, that uh, protect you, um, real privations that are uh, dangerous. Um, I think that I thought about this because what we experienced, um, it, you know, on in the middle of the night between Sunday and Monday of last week, you know, when the power went off, when the temperatures plummeted, um, when we were cold, um, multiple nights, um, we didn't choose that. You know, we didn't choose, well, you know, to do without electricity for for Lent and then go out and switch off the power at the fuse box. This was something that was thrust upon us. Um, and because we didn't choose these privations, because they were, they were dangerous, um, you know, it, it, because there was something to worry about there. That that was more like what Jesus experienced than when we choose the small things that we hope there will be grace in, um, and it's helpful. And God willing, those will be the kind of privations we experience in future Lent. But this time, what we experienced was more like uh, what Jesus experienced. In that sense. I remember I said pick three, so you got to move on. Um, I next turn to the uh, lesson from uh, Genesis that Jeffrey Pitsenbarger read for us. And the first thing that jumped off there was this idea of covenant. Um, what is described there is an agreement uh, between God and not of one particular people or one particular nation, but it's basically an agreement between God and the entire earth. Um, uh, God pledges 
that you know the earth will not be destroyed by a global flood. The thing that's interesting about agreements uh, or covenants uh, with our creator is that it's not like a, a regular agreement or contract. Usually, you know, in, in human affairs, when we have a contract, you know, something is given in return for something else, you know, a, a quid uh, quo, uh, what's that word? Uh, a, 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 a quid pro quo, that's it. Something for something. Um, there is, you know, you know uh, consider yourself a part of the family uh, after some consideration. I mean, something is passed and then something is given. But in this particular con type of contract, you know, the divine covenant with the earth, um, God uh, pledges to give something, but there is nothing required in return for that to be. Um, and so uh, this is sort of like the way God does things um, uh, for reasons that are known only to God. God has chosen um, to make agreements with human beings, um, uh, ultimately uh, giving the life of Jesus on the cross. Um, before we had done anything, before we uh, could possibly have, have have given anything, you know, of, of worth to God. That gift came first, um, uh, and that's the uh, kind of agreement, the kind of covenants uh, that God makes with God's people. Of course, uh, the promise is that uh, we respond to that covenant, that we respond to that agreement that we recognize in the light of all that God has given us, our smallness and where we have erred, where we have strayed, where we have not lived up to the promise. And that's why we have seasons like Lent. Um, when we reflect, when we repent, when we look for ways to amend our lives to be more in sync with God's purposes. And uh, the, the final thing that just uh, um, jumped off the page for me, um, of course, in this story from Genesis, is it is a, a story that, uh, that's ancient um, that tells us about the rainbow. Um, you know, flood stories uh, are, go back from, to the Bronze Age and from the Neolithic prehistory of, of humanity. Um, and because of that, they, they occur, you know, all over the place in different cultures, um, including uh, making their way into the uh, Judeo-Christian Bible. But this particular uh, story helps explain this wonderful phenomenon, uh, this work of beauty that from time to time would appear in the sky amongst the clouds. And that was the beautiful colors of the rainbow. It's the kind of thing that just lifts your heart. You know it's a good sign. Um, and our ancestors in faith saw this as a sign that reminded them of this first covenant, this first agreement with the entire world, with all peoples and, and animals and living creatures of every kind on earth. Um, the rainbow is a great symbol in, uh, in Christian art. Um, and I particularly like this because it, it helps remind us by analogy that there is the seen and there is the unseen because we know that these colors, uh, different wavelengths of light are all mixed together and you know, they're under most conditions invisible. Um, it is only when they are refracted through raindrops or through a prism that these wavelengths are, uh, because they are of different lengths, uh, will bend in, in slightly different angles and separate out to produce these colors. It's a great reminder that, you know, our uh, particular uh, set of, of sensory uh, abilities, you know, 
are, are limited and we can't see everything. There is so much complexity in the world that, you know, that our eyes just can't take in without assistance. Uh, by analogy, this reminds us that the world of spirit, uh, the, the world of heaven, the kingdom of heaven is so very real. Um, and we may not be able to see it, but the kingdom of heaven can be manifest. It can be uh, put into action um, in our world, but it requires us. God's love is bathing an entire world, but it requires human beings to enact it, to be the hands and feet of God in this world. And this Lent um, is a time to examine, um, to realize how we have all fallen short of this task and to find ways to recommit um, and to allow the transformative power of God's love to work in our lives. Amen. And now let us affirm our faith by saying the words of the Apostles' Creed. It is found on page 96 of the Book of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, Come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
O God, the King eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning. Drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we bless your name for the witness of Frederick Douglass, whose impassioned and reasonable speech moved the hearts of people to a deeper obedience to Christ. Strengthen us also to speak on behalf of those in captivity and tribulation, continuing in the way of Jesus Christ, our liberator, who with you and the Holy Spirit dwells in glory everlasting. Amen. O Lord, our governor, whose glory is in all the world, we commend this nation to your merciful care, that being guided by your providence, we may dwell secure in your peace. Grant to the President of the United States, the governor of this state, and to all in authority, wisdom and strength to know and to do your will. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness. Make them ever mindful of their calling to serve this people in your fear. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you made the universe with all its marvelous order its atoms, worlds, and galaxies, and the infinite complexity of living creatures. Grant that as we probe the mysteries of your creation, we may come to know you more truly and more surely fulfill our role in your eternal purpose. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom comes every good and perfect gift, send down upon your servant, Jonathan, the spirit of your grace, that he may be empowered for the work you are given him to do as rector of this parish. Bless Jonathan and his family as they move and anticipate their new home on Galveston Island. Grant this, O Father, for the honor of our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. We now invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. We remember those who have died, especially Lou Bailey, and those who have died as a result of this winter storm and those who have died from COVID. We remember those who are ill, Diane, Elizabeth, Andy, Kim, and all who are ill with COVID, especially Chrissy who fights for life this day. Leslie, Shushu, A.R. and Kathleen, Camelia, Debbie, Anthony, Norman, Mary, John, Rick, and Reverend Helen. We pray for those who need water, food, pipes and homes fixed, 
for those displaced from their homes and those without transportation. For businesses struggling to stay viable against double disasters. And we pray for our African-American brothers and sisters as we celebrate Black History Month. We give thanks to you, Lord, for the calling of our new priest and for the individuals, organizations, and volunteers who rise up to help their neighbors when we are in trouble. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us say together the general thanksgiving found on page 101 of the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Good morning and welcome to Grace Episcopal Church, Galveston. If this is your first time with us, we are very happy to have you worship with us. If you're a regular, welcome back. We hope that you survive the storm with minimal consequences. If you need help, please give us a call and let us know what we can do. Next Sunday, we'll resume in-person worship in the sanctuary with the Holy Eucharist. We will wear masks and observe social distancing. That will also be Father Dearman's last Sunday as our interim rector for the second time. We will give thanks to him next week, but we'll plan a more inclusive appreciation later in the year when we can come together in a larger group. Two weeks from today, March 7th, will be the first service with our new rector, the Reverend Jonathan Toddy. He and his family arrived March 1st. We'll have fellowship following this service at about 10.15. The credentials for the Zoom meeting are in the e-messenger. This afternoon at 5 p.m., we begin the Lenten Christian Education Series based on the Living Compass, Living Well Through Lent. You can download those devotionals via the link in the eMessenger, and you can access the Zoom credentials in the eMessenger also. I keep mentioning eMessenger. If you're not receiving the eMessenger, you can actually sign up for it on the church's website. The financials for January for Grace were quite disappointing. We received less than half of the anticipated donations from pledges and other offerings. If you have pledged and are able to do so, we would appreciate your becoming current. It's also not too late to pledge or contribute. 
You can find links for both on the website. Again, we're so happy to have you worshiping with us. We hope to see you next Sunday. Goodbye.